Welcome back to VFX for the Indie Filmmaker. In this module, we're going to be quickly going over compositing and fusion within DaVinci Resolve. Just like the last module that we did in After Effects, it's just going to kind of be a quick overview, but it'll give you the tools so you can see you can actually uh, do your compositing for free within uh, fusion and DaVinci Resolve. So to begin, we're going to go ahead and open up a new uh, file. And we're going to go over here to our media and we're going to create a new bin just so we can keep this orderly. Let's call this uh, compositing. And we're going to go ahead and create a new timeline. go all right it's a little easier in uh, DaVinci to bring in your sequences all you have to do is open your folder where you downloaded the files I sent and those are in the last module it'll be attached to that file so you can go back there and download them but all you have to do to bring sequences into DaVinci is just grab the entire folder drag it over and it brings it in as a sequence so we'll do that for each one of our layers there we go and if you want to double check to make sure it's read as 30 frames which this was set to just click on the inspector over here and go to file and 30 frames 30 frames and there we go they're all 30 frames so to start compositing, we're just going to drag our, uh, our lead layer, which is our actress, onto the timeline. So there we go. And we'll launch Fusion. Once we're in Fusion, you can go ahead and min minimize this down to one window. We don't need multiple windows. It's this button up here. So again, in Fusion, this is a uh, node-based editing in here. Anything between our two media in is out is what you're going to see. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to layer all this stuff up. So this button right here, we'll drag down a merge node and we'll get a couple of them. We're going to need a few. For this first merge node, if you look at the merge nodes, the yellow is your background, the green is your foreground, and the little square is your out. And then this is any mask or effects, any effect stuff you have that you're pumping in. So we're going to bring our first layer to our foreground, and we're going to drag our next layer, which is our wings, down here, and put that into the background. So now if we look at our out, we have the wings. All right, so I like to kind of orient these. If you drag these around, your, your arrows would change wherever you want them. I kind of like to have my foreground up here and my background off to the side. So we're going to drag another merge node. And this one is now going to be our foreground. And if we drag our next layer, which is our thrones in and connect it to our background and then connect this to our media out. Now you can see we've got our thrones. Like I said, keeping the straight is really going to help you once you start getting 20 nodes down here and we'll drag our next merge into our foreground. And our walls, which is our last layer, into our background. You know? So now we've got all of our nodes set up and all of our layers showing. And if you look, this uh, this playback is quite a bit faster than After Effects. That's one reason I like using Fusion. It's, it's quite a bit faster. Now once you start adding effects and uh, different layers, it is going to slow down a bit, but it is still quite a bit faster than uh, After Effects as far as playback. 
So just like in After Effects, all we have to do is start uh, adding our different uh, nodes so we can start compositing. And the first one we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and color correct our actress here. So if you hit shift spacebar, and just search color and we'll select color correct and we'll add that node. Now this node is a little odd. You actually need an input. It doesn't necessarily go into your uh, actual foreground, which is a different input as you can see. So we're going to bring this from here into our input and swap that around. So now we can go ahead and go to our color correct button and start changing, bring our gamma down a little bit to darken her up a bit. Now, when I said this node's a little weird, it, uh, there's a few, few actions up here that'll kind of affect the overall image. So see, I bring this brightness up and down. You can see it's affecting the whole image for some reason, not just that layer, but to fix that, all you have to do is take your out from your first media in and put it into your blue mask effects. So now your top layer is masking out what you want. So now we can go ahead and go in color correct and only affect our character there, our actress. So we can make a few adjustments and changes, bring it down so she's matching our scene. So there we go. Good enough for now. Now, any other effects that you want to add in here, you just add it in line where you want to add it. So say we want to blur up everything back here like we did in After Effects in the last module. We can just go ahead and shift spacebar, search for a blur. And again, I'm only using the effects that are available within Resolve. I'm not going to use any of the uh, any of the Boris effects effects. I'll save that for the next module. So we'll go ahead and add a blur. And we want everything below our uh, our actress here. So in order to do that, what we could do is you could either just place it here and we're going to blur everything up and I'll kind of show you a trick. Bring this to the output. Let's go ahead and blur our image up a little bit. I'm going to blur it quite a bit so you can see what's going on. Now, just like we did with the color, we can input this output to the mask effects and it's only going to blur her. But what we can do is go to settings and apply mask inverted. So now it's not blurring her, it's blurring everything around. So now we can go ahead and change our settings for our blur. And I'm going to bring this way down a bit because it's too blurry. Maybe 1.3 is good. So there we go. And as you can see, it starts slowing down a little bit. Now, anything else we do, we just add it where, where we need it. Say we needed to, uh, we definitely want to add some motion blur to these wings because we really don't have too much motion blur going on. So we can hit shift spacebar, and search for motion blur. We'll add that node. Oop, sorry, don't shake to disconnect, I forgot. And we can bring that down by our wings. We're going to input that, input that. And you can see our wings are starting to blur up with, with its motion. And of course we can uh, get better results. You can pump it up high if you want for a lot of blur or I just like leave it at about 50%. So now we've got a blur on those wings. 
as they move. So just like any other effects, say we want to add a flare, grab a lens flare, add, and we want this on top of everything. So we're going to bring this in, bring our source in. Now we've got a lens flare and you can do all the same stuff we did in uh, in uh, After Effects, meaning uh, we want to go ahead and keyframe our level right there and as it starts covering, we'll knock that down to zero. So we knock, I got our lens flare coming in and out with the wings. So, and that's the basic concept of compositing with infusion. So now if we, uh, let me go ahead and disconnect this. Not a fan of the lens flare. Here we go. Now, as far as using Mocha Pro, um, all we really need to do is shift space. Mocha Pro, and I didn't want it there. All we have to do if we want to do the same thing we did in After Effects, track this eye, is just pump that footage in, and then we can launch Mocha Pro. And we'll give it a playthrough. Good. And same thing, we'll just create some X blinds around our eye. And we will track. Hey, you notice this. Uh, Mocha Pro seems to be a lot faster in Fusion than it was in After Effects as well. And we'll save this. We can export shape. And make sure you're on Blackmagic Fusion Shapes. Copy to clipboard. Close that. Hit Control V to paste. And we've got our shape pasted. Now if we wanted to add that eye, we could uh, Add a shape or a background, whatever you want to add. And we'll just make this orange. Get a little oranger. There we go. And make that the mask. Let's grab another merge. Let's move this up. Put this into our foreground. And then we need to bring this into our background. Bring that into our background. Now we've got the uh, orange eye up there from our mocha track. And you don't have to specifically add a blur on this one. You can just go straight to that uh, polygon layer it created and we can uh, soft edge it up to point two. That might be too much. That's way too much. Point zero zero four. Let's do that. Yeah, that's still too much. Yeah, this is pretty, uh, the softness on these polygons is pretty intense. So. Zero five. There we go. And maybe a little more, but you get the picture. So that's how you would uh, use Mocha Pro to track eyes and replace eyes. And then you can just jump back in and make your second one if you need to make more and just copy and uh, paste that new shape. 
we go back to our edit tab, you can see we've got our composited footage with our crazy flickering wings. So in the next module, we're going to be going in depth with compositing, but I'm going to be using Silhouette, which is actually a paid program from Boris FX. So if you've never used Silhouette, you may want to jump over to Boris FX and maybe download the free version and go over some tutorials because it's, it's a pretty robust program, but it's an amazing program. It's one of my favorites for compositing and you'll see why once we jump in and start doing it. And like I said, it'll be a very in-depth tutorial on how to actually get real nice looking compositing. So see you in the next module. If you like this video and would like access to the full course, you can visit my pay hit page, link in the description. For only $26, you're getting access to six hours of instructional video, as well as access to footage, Blender project files, and other pre-production file downloads. The VFX for the Indie Filmmaker course covers complete instruction from pre-production to project delivery and includes modules such as keying and compositing, creating and rendering 3D sets, and everything else you'll need to know to go from charging hundreds of dollars per project to thousands of dollars per project.